So, Dave, you have more news from the Gamergate front? Yeah, ABC decided to cover this on Nightline a couple weeks ago. And, oh, oh, that show. Yeah. Oh, my God, was this bad. This was just awful. Basically, what they did was they continued the whole narrative of it's just evil basement-dwelling male gamers trying to abuse, you know, poor, victimized Anita Sarkeesian and Brianna Wu. Yeah, please, victimize me as much as they are. Please. You know what kills me? If you actually go back and watch the footage, you could see um, they say, this is the normal everyday life of Anita Sarkeesian. As she's walking to the car, escorted by police. But do you see the smile on her face? Oh, yeah, I saw that. The liar smile. And listen, Mm -hmm. if your life was under such a direct threat that you needed to be escorted by police legitimately, I wouldn't be smiling. Around here, we call that a shit-eating grin. Exactly. That's exactly what that is. And it's comical, to say the least. And here's the thing about the ABC piece. First thing they do is they give Anita all this airtime to talk about all her bullshit. And they give almost no time to Gamergate. And they try to say that the problem is you have male gamers constantly harassing women... And do they show any kind of studies on this or show all kinds of evidence? Hell no. They show one example, one that they very easily could have set up themselves and not told anybody. And not only that, but they were showing, uh, I think the game was Counter-Strike. I could be wrong about that. But they were showing a woman playing Counter-Strike and this one guy in there was being a jerk and, and saying all kinds of disgusting things to her, like... You know, hitting on her, but a little, a little more aggressive. You get that, yeah. But you get that anywhere. You get the, that if you're a guy. But here's the thing. Here's what they ignored. If you actually watch the footage, you can see the other male gamers telling this guy to stop spamming, to shut up, yeah, and to leave her alone. But of course, they're not going to mention that. Of course not. No, instead, that's that's their blanket statement about male gamers that were that were playing games in our mother's basements and we hit on women. In fact, the only person that they had on there to talk about from the gamer's perspective, they made sure to go out of their way to say that he is not part of Gamergate. You know, it's upsetting. TV media loves to bring out this false balance, you know, like someone sensible comes on TV to talk about science and they have to give equal time to some nut who thinks the Earth is 6,000 years old or whatever. But whenever, and Nightline is one of the worst of these, you know, they cover some psychic woo or alt-med bogosity. They might bring in a skeptic like James Randi and only show you 10 seconds of his interview taken completely out of context. Here, they didn't even do that much. Here's the thing. ABC has always sucked. ABC has always been terrible. The only time it wasn't is when John Stossel was on. And to be perfectly frank, I don't think enough people give ABC shit. I mean, you always hear about MSNBC and Fox, and don't get me wrong, they're horrible too. Nobody's taking away from how horrible they are. But ABC, just as bad, if not worse. This is the same station, ABC. You remember the whole debt ceiling fiasco. This was the same news station that on their World News and Nightline and Good Morning America, they had a countdown clock to what they called Armageddon. Oh, God. If they didn't reach a deal on the debt ceiling. It is embarrassing how bad ABC is. And as I was saying, ABC is worse than than MSNBC and Fox, because they try to be subtle about their bullshit. They don't outright say that they support one party or another, which they clearly do, but they just don't come out and say it. They try to be deceitful about it. Yeah. And and that's the worst. Like, Fox, yeah, they suck, but at least they're honest about their shittiness. Well, I don't know. They're still doing that whole fair and balanced thing. Yeah, but I mean, at, at the very least, they're they're blatantly open about who they support. Yeah, They might say they're fair and balanced. I mean, yeah, it's obvious that they're full of shit. ABC, the less intuitive, might actually believe them. I think that's a fair statement. But, I mean, is it too much to ask for Nightline to do any basic research? I mean, they opened up this segment talking about women being raped in Grand Theft Auto V, and there are no rape sequences in Grand Theft Auto V. And I have a link in the show notes to a Twitter exchange with Brianna Wu, because she made that same claim, and someone pointed out to her, no, 
there's no rape in Grand Theft Auto V, her reply was, quote, Plenty of mods have this. What a You can't dumb... hold a gaming company responsible for what modders do. Seriously, that's user-inputted creative content. You can't... You... Well, let me tell you something about Brianna Wu, okay? Brianna Wu is one of these typical social justice warriors who talks about how minorities and women are oppressed and all that shit and how oh they they can't they're not allowed to make games because the evil patriarchy won't let them. Well, let me tell you something about Brianna Wu, okay? She came from a rich family who, and her father gave her $200,000 to to fulfill her dream of making a game. And yes, she has an all-female dev team. That's perfectly fine. So what game does she make to try and break away from the patriarchy's evil hold on negative female stereotypes? A game with all white women with large chests. <laughs> so, Brianna Wu, you are a t another con artist who m is making the rounds on all those news stations like MSNBC and all that. Anita Sarkeesian is a blatant con artist. Oh, yeah. We've talked about her before. Yes, and, and now it's being discovered that she has ties with people who are under suspicion of being con men. Tip, uh, our meeting uh, work kind of deals where they hold those seminars on how to get into these big business ventures. Oh, I know the kind you're talking about, yeah. yeah. But I just really, I want to examine her claims. And there was something in this piece about a game called Watch Dogs and... As much as I would love to, I just don't have the time to play games. So I can't really say about this personally, but I did some research on Watch Dogs. And Sarkeesian was saying that it's sexist because there's a guy who murders a woman in order to motivate the hero to chase the bad guy. But according to what I read, Watch Dogs randomizes that. It might be a guy killing a guy, or I don't know what the different options are. If it's a bad guy character, or it might be if they randomize the bad guy, it might be a woman killing a woman, a woman... Whatever. A lot of those characters are randomized. I never played Watch Dogs, so I don't know for sure. But even even without the randomized, I mean, if you saw somebody killing women on the street, would you try to stop them? Oh, yeah. What's sexist about that? See, the, the fact that her statement was you're using this as a motivation to stop the bad guy. Is that not a good enough motivation for you? That's kind of sexist that you would let women die because you don't want to be motivated to stop a bad guy. Yeah. I mean, this is ridiculous. And to make matters worse, ABC, oh, oh my God, the YouTube comments, when they posted this video on YouTube, they actually were deleting comments. They started deleting comments from notable people like Total Biscuit. ABC did? Yes, ABC. Wow. It got to the point that people started archiving the comments and reposting them in the video, and Another thing I want to point out, speaking of the YouTube video, the video has about 238,710 views. Now, they tried to say that Gamergate was a vocal minority, okay? Now, tell me if this is a vocal minority. The likes, 1,173. The dislikes, 33,408. Wow. Vocal minority, my ass. You know what this is all about? Gamers are tired of people like Anita Sarkeesian, like Brianna Wu, like Jack Thompson in the days of old. We've been told for years and years that our hobby is a catalyst of evil in some form or another. Yeah, it causes violence, it causes mass shootings, yeah. And these people are not new. We've been dealing with this shit since the dawn of entertainment. I'm sure back when plays were first a thing, somebody out there was going, no, that's too much fun. I got to put a stop to that. Yeah. Well, I mean, a, a few months ago, I don't know if you uh, heard Charles and I were talking about Vinegar Valentines, which was basically in the 19th century, you could send anonymously a hate Valentine to someone. And one of their targets was people who read novels and how they don't wash and can't get a date and things like that. And I'm like, isn't that exactly what they say about gamers today? Yeah, that's exactly what they say about gamers today. And, you know, it, these people just hate fun, is what it comes down to. I don't necessarily know why they hate fun, but they hate fun enough that they want to stop other people from having it. And no one's surprised that ABC is taking an, a blatantly anti-Gamergate stance. You're dealing with... Basically, a consumer revolution where they're tired 
of gaming journalists treating them like pieces of shit. I mean, these gaming journalists came out and blatantly said, gamers are dead. They are not the audience we need to focus on. Wow. This is gaming journalists. They're telling you that their own customers are dead to them. Well, and ABC was saying things like, oh, no, this is because about gamers are resistant to change in video games. Are you resistant to change in video games? No. But the problem is these people don't want change to simply have a different kind of market. They want to take away the market that they find offensive, too. But if gamers were resistant to change, we'd all still be playing 2D 8-bit games with cheesy music, as opposed to modern, high-definition, ultra-realistic 64-bit games with cheesy music. To be fair, the cheesy music back then is probably a little better than some of the cheesy music now. <laughs> True. I mean, Christ, if you look at all the posts I make in the video game music thread on the Bogosity Forum, which you should join, by the way, shill, shill, shill. Okay. Yeah, I've been posting a lot of that shit. But anyway, as I was trying to say, it's not surprising because you have old journalism, old school journalism, which has always been full of shit and has always treated their consumer base like basically stupid people. And in fact, I know from experience that that's how they're trained to think. Because when I went to broadcasting school and did all the broadcasting stuff back in high school, that's what we were told. We were told to view your audience like they are morons, like they are non-thinking robots. Yeah, that's what you're told to do in the movie industry. Yeah, that's what you're told to do. And that's exactly what they do. So it's old media defending new media trying to act like old media. Yeah. So, no surprise there. You're all a bunch of liars and con artists, and people are finally calling you out for it. So, of course, they're going to try and put up the fight. But, I mean, you also have these things like, oh, these sexists were so oppressed, you can download an app where you punch Anita Sarkeesian in the face. I remember back in the 90s, people made things like the Java apps and stuff like that where you could punch, you know, Bill Gates in the face. I mean, that was pretty cathartic, just beating up Bill Gates. That is nothing new. But even a little sooner than that, how about on, because I know what you're talking about, the Punch Anita game on Newgrounds. Well, how about the Punch George Bush game? Yeah. There were plenty of those. In fact, I recall someone making a Punch Obama game and everyone said, you're racist! Yeah, that's usually how it works. But you can do it to George W. Bush and Bill Gates and, you know, and no one says anything. No, nobody says anything because... They don't want equality. They want to be the privileged class. Exactly. It's not about equality. It's about supremacy, and it always has been. I mean, the fact is, <laughs> to use ABC, or a person from ABC, Barbara Walters herself said the fight for equality is long over because pretty much women can do just about anything men can do now. And, I mean, except for physical limitations, there's not a hell of a lot to really stop them. They might make different choices. Yes, th different choices. Like, for example, with the whole STEM stuff, that's the reason why a lot of women aren't necessarily getting into, like, physics and stuff like that, and major math-related, uh, you know, jobs. But that's on them. They choose courses that don't fall into the STEM category, and... That's where a lot of these, you know, physicians and math-related jobs and even a little bit of game development falls into that. And then these same people will come out and say, well, that's because it's sexist and all that nonsense. No, it's not that it's sexist. It's that you didn't want to put in the work to get the kind of education you needed to get into that line of work. And you are the only one you can blame for that. So stop making excuses. That's all you're doing. You are making excuses and then trying to put the blame on others. It's your own fault. Unless you have some kind of physical detriment that prevents you from doing something, if you are motivated enough, there should be nothing to stop you. But you're not motivated, are you? Instead, you would rather just make excuses, blame others, and then say, Woe is me, I am a victim. Please give me money on my Patreon account. God forbid you put in actual work to get where you want to be. Unless your name is Brianna Wu, then you can ask Daddy. But my point is, these people are complainers, they're excuse makers, they are nothing more. And people like Anita Sarkeesian, you are a clear con artist. Brianna Wu, you are a clear con artist. They are not... Gamers, especially Anita, who has come out and actually said that she is not a gamer in seminars. But then when she tries to pub, you know, to go through with the 
feminist frequency nonsense, she'll say, I've been gaming all my life. No, you're a liar. You are a liar, a con artist, and a thief. And ABC, I expect no kind of decency from you. So it's no surprise to the rest of the class here that you would go and side with con men and con women and continue to spread a false narrative to try and further your ratings boosts so that you can appeal to baby boomers who don't know anything about internet culture. So yeah, ABC, fuck you, (laughs) essentially.